The Summoner class in Terraria comprises of using a huge range of whips and minions to battle your foes. Summoners steadily get stronger throughout the game, but what if we did something crazy and break the class completely? How's it going crew? This is Happy Days and today we're going to see how overpowered you can make the Summoner class in Terraria. Now before we get started, I need to explain how this video is going to work. As the title of this video states, we're going to look at how overpowered you can make the Summoner class in Terraria, which means I'll only be looking at weapons with the Summon damage type. We'll be examining what the best, most overpowered Summoner weapons, armor, accessories and items are available at 5 major stages of the game. These stages are a brand new world before you start your first boss fight, just before the wall of flesh battle, the start of hard mode before your first hard mode boss, just before the golem battle and finally post moon lord victory with every item in the game available. In each section I'll be farming, looting and crafting the absolute best summoner equipment available at each stage of the game. Also by popular request I'll also represent the best summoner weapons in each category including combat minions, sentry summons and whips. Any buffs are allowed such as potions, furniture and set bonuses as long as they're available in the stage of the game we're exploring. As you will know, there's lots of summoner weapon, armor, and accessory combinations in Terraria, so if during this video I suggest something you'd do differently, that's totally okay, and please share your ideas in the comments below. Finally, I won't be using any major glitches to obtain items earlier than you normally would be able to get them in the spirit of this challenge. We are simply looking to overpower our character using all the items available to us at each stage of the game. With that said, let's get this crazy challenge started. We begin our adventure as most people do in Terraria by destroying the nearby forest to collect tons of wood. Similar to mages, we can't craft a summoner starter weapon from wood, so I'll rely on a wooden broadsword for now. I'll need the merchant NPC to move in as soon as possible, so I'll build a few quick NPC houses. There's a ton of powerful upgrades available early for summoners, but I'll need the merchant's bug net to unlock them. One of the first things worth doing is checking the surface of your world for living trees, as these can contain the Finch Staff summon weapon. If we're lucky, we'll also find a garden gnome here too, which will slightly boost our luck when farming in this run. Next we'll need to earn some money for the merchant to spawn, so I craft some torches and head underground to start looting. At this stage I'm just looking to find some basic ores, loot and accessories from all the treasure chests. I'll earn plenty of money from smashing all the pots along the way, so we'll unlock the merchant in no time. If you're wondering, I'm playing on a medium world in normal mode. Using bigger world sizes is beneficial for summoners as they generally require more room for boss fights and events. Back at base I purchase a bug net from the merchant. I also craft a fishing rod and a bucket to hold some water as we're about to get our first major upgrades. I make some random armor but save my gold bars as we'll need those for an upgrade very soon. Heading to the underground jungle I explore until I find a fairly open area and create a safety box and then use the water duplication trick to make a 300 tile fishing spot underneath for maximum fishing power. We're achieving several goals by doing this. Firstly, our finch summon will slowly collect stingers and vines from the hornets and man eaters while I'm fishing to craft our first whip called the snapthorn, and we can catch variegated lardfish to craft summoning potions. We swing past base again to quickly craft our snapthorn whip, a few mana stars and some summoning potions before heading back underground for another loot run to prepare for our first boss fight. Our main goals now are to max out our health as well as find enough gems to craft our first gem hook. We'll also grab any loot we can get our hands on as soon we'll be reforging our equipment and that can get really expensive in the early game. Next we head to the underground snow biome in search of the Snowflink's enemy type. These enemies drop a material called Flinx Fur which can be used to craft the only pre-boss summoner armor and a decent minion summon weapon. I only need 14 Flinx Fur total for my crafting needs but farming can be slow so I blast open a small farming area to help increase the mob spawn rate. Back at base I craft the Flinx Fur coat and the Flinx Staff. Our new armor gives us 5% extra minion damage as well as an extra minion slot. When combined with our summoning potions we can now summon 3 minions which is huge at this stage of the game. Now that we're powered up, I fight the goblins to unlock the Goblin Tinkerer NPC, as reforging for damage modifiers are critical to summon a loadouts to maximize damage. The combination of our Snapthorn and three Flink summons absolutely tear through the goblins, and soon enough, they're defeated. After sorting my inventory, I start to build a elevator to the underworld. This achieves several goals. Firstly, it provides me an easy way to access the underworld later for our wall of flesh battle. Next, it gives me an easy way to search for the Goblin Tinkerer NPC. I notice him while we're exploring and quickly purchase some rocket boots and a Tinkerer's workstation. I do try to get a better modifier for my whip, but I am totally out of cash, so that's gonna have to wait for a little bit later. I notice a Blood Moon has begun, so I travel to a farming arena I set up at the ocean to try for several special items. This arena allows my minions to farm up regular Blood Moon mobs while I safely fish up Zombie Merman and Wandering Eyefish. Zombie Merman and Wandering Eyefish can drop the Vampire Frog Staff Summon which is a nice damage boost to our Flink Staff. 
I get incredibly lucky and get two shark tooth necklaces and the vampire frog stuff within the first few minutes of farming. I spend the rest of the night trying to get the chum caster too, but it looks like my luck has finally run out. We've almost done everything a summoner can do before their first boss fight, but there's still a few last power-ups we need. Firstly, I smash my way through the jungle biome to find an anklet of the wind and the feral claws. The feral claws increase my whip speed by 12% and even give me auto swing, which will massively boost my damage. As we're about to start fighting bosses, it's time to organize my character's buff potion supply. I make sure to get plenty of Eben Koi from the corruption as they craft the powerful wrath potions which give me a decent 10% boost to all of my damage. I'll put an image on screen with all the relevant combat buff potions available at this stage of the game as well as the summoner exclusive buffs that will get us one step closer to being completely overpowered. Next I blast my way through the ice biome to find the ice gates as well as some extra loot as I'm about to spend a ton of cash on reforging and every little bit of loot I can find will help a lot. Down in the underworld I farm a bunch of fire imps searching for an obsidian rose. This is one of the components to make lava waders which I need for the ultimate boot upgrade. Did you know that whips, despite Despite being a summoner weapon, actually benefit from melee speed bonuses? That means wearing armor pieces with bonus attack speed actually increase the DPS of our whips. I set up a simple farm in the corruption and farm for the ancient shadow helmet and greaves which drop from eaters of souls for a decent 14% bonus to my whips attack speed. Back at base I craft some wrath and endurance potions and then use some spare gems to make stained glass windows for some extra cash. I then sell all the loot I can find for even more money and then craft the terror spark boots and tiger climbing gear. I then visit the goblin and ask him nicely to give me some good modifiers or I'll give him a nice lava bath. I'm going for menacing on all my accessories for damage and ruthless is generally the best modifier for most minion summoning weapons. In the recent 1.4.1 update, whips no longer get a range increase for slower attack speed on PC, so I'll go for the legendary modifier for maximum damage. As always, this first stage is arguably the biggest in the game in terms of power-ups available, so here's what I managed to achieve in pre-hard mode without fighting a single boss. We have a legendary Snapthorn and the Vampire Frog and Flink Staff with the Ruthless modifiers. I'm wearing the Flink Spur coat for a bonus minion slot and the Ancient Shadow Helmet and Greaves for a boost to our whip speed. Our Feral Claws give our whip the Auto Swing ability and the Shark Tooth Necklace gives both our whip and minions 5 bonus armor penetration which really helps to increase our damage. It's time to start Stage 2 and that means we can access everything up to the Wall of Flesh battle. Now that bosses are available, I make straight for the jungle to challenge the Queen Bee. I'm looking to collect lots of bee wax which will enable us to create the Bee Armor, our first full summoner set which gives us two extra minion slots and a huge boost of 23% summon damage. The Witch Doctor even moves in while I'm farming Queen Bees and now you can buy the Pygmy Necklace pre-hard mode at night for a bonus minion slot which is a massive boost for us. I craft a few more abominations as this is a really quick way to earn lots of cash at this stage of the game before moving on. Before heading back to base I quickly swing by a Demon Altar and craft a bunch of Slime Crowns as there's a powerful summoner upgrade that is guarded by the King Slime. Back at base I craft a set of bee armor and the Hornet Staff. I use the honeycomb I got off the Queen Bee to craft a Stinger Necklace for an extra 5 points of armor penetration. Did you know that summoners whips can actually benefit from flask buffs? We can only craft poison flasks at the moment but more powerful flasks will be available soon. I use one of my slime crowns to summon the King Slime. I'm trying to get my hands on the slimy saddle mount as when you bounce on enemies it actually deals summon damage. With all of our damage buffs we absolutely destroy the King Slime in mere moments and a few slimes later we finally claim our prize. The slimy saddle starts at 40 damage per bounce but quickly gets stronger the more summoner damage bonuses we have. Next we return to the corruption to challenge the Eater of Worlds. I need to collect the shadow scales it drops to craft a nightmare pickaxe which is required to mine hellstone ore and collect the hellforge in pre-hard mode now. We also need to defeat the Eater to unlock the tavern keep NPC. The tavern keep NPC allows me to summon the old one's army which will provide some powerful summoner equipment later in our adventure. After swinging past base to craft a nightmare pick our next goal is in the underworld. On the way down I bump into the unconscious man. I wake up the tavern keep and buy an Eternia crystal stand and a few Eternia crystals from him. I also grab a ballista rod which is useful against the wall of flesh and then just for fun I jump on the detonator and the tavern keep and I explode into a million pieces. After respawning I start exploring the underworld for a hellforge. They're fairly common so it doesn't take long to find one. I then drink an obsidian skin potion and start mining some hellstone ore. I only need enough for an imp staff and flask of fire but hellstone bars sell really well so I'll mine up some extra to sell for cash. It's night by the time I return to base. I place down our Hellforge and craft the Obsidian Armor Set. 
This set provides one less minion slot than the B armor, but gives us a whopping 31 bonus to summon damage and increases our whip speed by 35% and range by an insane 50%. I also craft an imp staff and a few flasks of fire and visit the goblin for some quick reforges before heading to the dungeon. Later that night, I talk to the old man and summon Skeletron. There's several summoner upgrades available in the dungeon, including a new whip and some minion buffing furniture, so I definitely want to get my hands on them. Our boosted whip power absolutely tears Skeletron apart while our imps casually lob fireballs at the poor skull until eventually it falls and we make our way to the depths below. My main targets in the dungeon are finding bewitching tables and collecting lots of bones. Bewitching tables are a furniture item that gives a bonus minion slot for 10 minutes when used, making them perfect additions to boss arenas. Bones are combined with cobwebs to craft the spinal tap whip, which does well against multiple targets and should be useful against the wall of flesh. The summoner class is extremely accessory dependent for extra minion slots slots and bonus damage, and even though I usually equip a cobalt shield for the knockback immunity, I likely won't use it much in this challenge to focus more on damage. Back at base I craft the spinal tap whip and visit the goblin to try and roll a legendary modifier for it. We've almost done everything a summoner can do before the wall of flesh, but I'm going to quickly fight tier 1 of the old one's army. I could wait until hard mode to do this, but by earning 25 defender medals now, I can start tier 2 of this event with a stronger sentry summon after a mech boss, which will make this event go much smoother then. One last thing I want to do before advancing to hard mode is prepare some mob farms in advance. An easy way to farm underground hard mode mobs is simply to blast open a huge area with dynamite. This allows us to more easily create an artificial biome for farming specific mob drops as we can control which biome is present in our farm. There was quite a few upgrades available in this stage now that we could fight bosses and we managed to score a legendary spinal tap and both the imp and hornet star. We upgraded to the insanely OP obsidian armor for this stage of the game and got a pygmy and stinger necklace as well as a bewitching table for even more minions and armor penetration. Using the runway I built earlier in the underworld we begin the third stage by throwing the guide voodoo doll into the lava and summoning the wall of flesh. Our spinal tap absolutely destroys the hungries while our imps rapidly attack the wall dealing heavy damage. Before whips were added to the game the strategy was to spam summon the ballista to make it rapid fire but as our whip is auto swing and very high damage I just summon the occasional ballista and focus more on keeping the tag damage from our whip applied to the wall. Soon enough the wall is defeated and we get a summoner emblem for our troubles and now we've officially entered hard mode. The first thing I do is visit a grave graveyard biome I created in the desert to visit the Dryad. In a recent update, the Dryad will now sell evil seeds opposite to your world's evil in hard mode, allowing me to create an artificial crimson biome. I immediately head to the farm I created earlier and plant the seeds in the dirt. The crimson grass won't spread underground, but it will corrupt nearby stone blocks with crimson, which means by the time I come back here, I can farm Icor from crimson mobs. Next, I head to a spider cave to start farming spider fangs. These are used to create multiple powerful summoner items, including the spider armor, spider staff, and the queen spider sentry staff. The spider armor in particular gives us a whopping three extra minion slots and a huge 28% bonus to our summon damage. I only need 76 fangs to craft everything, so I should be done here in no time. Back at base, I craft all the spider upgrades and throw some quick reforges on my new weapons. There's a whip upgrade available now, but I'll need a hard mode anvil to craft it, so it's time to start swinging my pwn hammer. Heading to the corruption, I smash a bunch of demon altars. This will get me all the ore I need and gives me the option to mine up some extra hard mode ores if I run short on cash later in our journey. I drink a mining potion and start the process of mining up all of this ore. Thankfully most summoner equipment is either purchased from NPCs or dropped from mobs and bosses so I only need enough ore to make a hard mode anvil and I can skip the rarer tier 3 ore completely. After sleeping in my tree bed for 3 days to speed up time, it finally starts to rain so I get up and hunt for ice golems. Ice golems are a rare enemy that only appear during blizzards and they drop a crafting material called the frost core. I start building a basic farm and soon I find that a frozen key has dropped and then a golem attacks me. The frost core is a guaranteed drop so I quickly take out the golem and escape with my prizes. I head back to my underground farm and find that the crimson grass has corrupted the nearby blocks and made a crimson biome. I take my time here farming up lots of icor as well as both normal and crimson mimics for a bunch of loot to sell. I even get the flesh knuckles from one of the crimson mimics which I need for an upgrade to my feral claws. Before heading back to base I stop by the underground hallowed to collect a few souls of light. To my absolute amazement I see a slime staff has dropped which might be useful if I want to make a money farm later on. Next I head back to the underworld to farm a few more walls of flesh to get the firecracker. It takes a few tries but eventually the fiery whip is mine. Back at base I craft the cool whip and then 
then upgrade my feral claws all the way to the berserkers gloves. I then use the icor I farm to craft icor flask. This allows my whip to apply the icor debuff to mobs and bosses producing their defense by a whopping 20 points. Using a bloody tear we got earlier, I start another blood moon and start fishing again trying to find the dread nautilus which drops the sanguine staff. Thankfully my arena allows me to focus on the dread nautilus while keeping the other mobs away and soon enough we claim our prize. After the night of madness I relax with a spot of fishing in the hallow to grab some prismite. These are used to craft life force potions for a 20% boost to my hate. HP. This stage had tons of powerful upgrades available making us more than ready for the hard mode bosses. We have a legendary firecracker and cool whip giving us lots of crowd control abilities thanks to each whip's unique power. Our new summons are the sanguine spider and queen spider staffs and we picked up the summoner and berserkers glove accessories for a nice damage boost. We also gained access to life force potions and icor flask to both improve our HP and increase our damage reduction against enemies. Stage 4 is here and now we can destroy some hard mode bosses. To give ourselves a huge power boost straight away I want to fight Duke Fishron so I quickly collect a few truffle worms using a simple farm in the mushroom biome. Flying can be useful against Fishron so after taking out a few wyverns I quickly swing past base and use the ice feather I got earlier to craft some frozen wings just in case I need some more mobility. I then set my spawn point at the ocean and cast my fishing rod to summon the evil fish. I'm relying on the incredible accuracy and speed of my sanguine staff to keep constant damage on Fishron while I focus on trying to avoid its attacks. Fishron is vulnerable to Icor, so when it's safe I make sure to reapply the debuff with my whips as often as possible to reduce its defense by 20 points, further increasing my bat's damage. Our new wings prove extremely useful in helping me avoid most of Fishron's attacks and soon enough we take out the beast and get Fishron wings on our first try. That said, I still want to get my hands on the Tempest staff so I keep on farming Fishrons. Although all our truffle worms become Fishron food, we eventually get our prize on our last poor worm. After reforging my new Tempest staff, I jump straight into the mech boss battles. Although I can be inaccurate, the Tempest Staff can dish out some extreme damage when it hits. The Twins fall quickly to the Torrents of Angry Sharks and Skeletron Prime likewise can't stand the damage, especially because both the Twins and Prime are vulnerable to Icor as well. The poor Destroyer didn't stand a chance as I immediately attack its bunched up body the moment it starts to spawn in, causing it to take extreme damage. With all the mech bosses defeated, I craft a new whip out of hallowed bars called the Durandal, a powerful whip that buffs attack speed. Lots of powerful summoner upgrades require us to first defeat defeat Plantera so I mine out a small arena near a bulb and then smash it. I simply fly circles around Plantera while my Sharknadoes easily hit the slow moving target dealing massive damage. My whip quickly clears out Plantera's tentacles in its second form and soon enough Plantera falls and we get a pygmy staff for our trouble. With Plantera defeated I visit the witch doctor and buy the tiki armor set giving me an extra minion slot and the Hercules beetle accessory which boosts summon damage by 15%. I head back to base and visit the tavern keep to upgrade my ballista rod to the ballista Cane using the medals I farmed earlier. After quickly reforging our new weapon, I challenged tier 2 of the old one's army as we can now get our hands on the sentry summoner armor sets as well as some sentry boosting accessories from the ogre mini boss. I need to farm 75 medals to buy the sentry summoner armor which requires beating this event 3 times. Although it takes a while, thankfully our minions are so strong the crystal barely gets scratched and soon enough we have the medals we need. Our next big goals are to challenge the pumpkin moon and fight the empress of light. I first head to the dungeon to collect some ectoplasm needed to craft the pumpkin moon medallion. With incredible luck we get the morning star almost immediately which is a powerful whip upgrade and then use our frozen key to unlock the ice chest and get the staff of frost hydra. The staff of frost hydra is a powerful sentry summon that will be useful versus the pumpkin moon. After creating a simple farm I roam around grinding mobs for tons of loot to sell as well as the tabby and black belt just in case I need master ninja gear to help with the empress of light day battle. Heart reach potions can be massively useful during events like the pumpkin moon so I I swing by my crimson farm and set up a quick fishing spot. I also take my time to fish up some extra loot to sell before heading back to base. I craft a bunch of heart reach potions and then grab my cobalt shield from my accessories box just as a precaution against getting stun locked by pumpkins. We then craft a few pumpkin moon medallions and get this crazy event underway. I need several items from this event including 750 spooky wood to craft the spooky armor, two necromantic scrolls as one of them I can use to upgrade to a papyrus scarab, a new whip called the dark harvest, and the Ravenstar. We managed to get a Ravenstaff early on and I immediately desummoned my bats and sharknadoes for ravens as they deal huge damage and can phase through enemies landing more hits. While dodging pumpkins I sweep over the ground collecting loot and notice two necromantic scrolls must have dropped in the chaos 
house as well as a bunch more spooky wood. The next morning I have almost everything I need except for the dark harvest. I head back to base and craft the spooky armor and then go to my accessories box and craft a papyrus scarab which gives a bonus minion slot and a huge 15% bonus summon damage. Later that night after some upgrades I smash through the pumpkin moon looking for a dark harvest. It drops from pumpkins but with all our new upgrades we get it soon enough and now it's time for the empress of light. First I visit the steampunker in the underground hello to buy a clentaminator and a bunch of blue solution. This will allow me to collect prismatic lace wings needed to summon the empress. I then quickly sidetrack to the jungle and collect the rest of the life fruits I need for max HP. With my spelunka and mining potions I find them quite quickly as well as about 3 million queen bees and lots of loot. Back on the surface I spread the hello to the right side of my base. Later that night with the aid of water candles and battle potions I use my bug net to collect prismatic lace wings. Prismatic lace wings are rare enemies that spawn in the hello at night that when killed summon the empress of light. After a few nights collecting lace wings I decide to fight the regular empress first to try and get my hands on the kaleidoscope. The kaleidoscope is the strongest whip in the game and gives minions a massive 20 bonus tag damage and a 10% chance to critical strike. Fighting her at night first also gives me a chance to familiarize myself with her attacks ahead of the dangerous daytime battle. The Empress is fast but our minions deal extreme damage and soon enough she falls and drops to the kaleidoscope. The next day I grab a bunch of stone and buy a blender matic from the steampunker before reforging my kaleidoscope to legendary. I also craft the master ninja gear which may be useful in our upcoming battle with its dash and dodge ability. I then head to the ocean and start crafting a bunch of asphalt. Making an asphalt bridge will help give me some extra running speed against the daytime Empress of Light and help avoid her instant kill attacks. I zoom out for the upcoming battle and the next morning I use all my buffs, swap my boots for Master Ninja gear and use my Sanguine Staff to summon as many bats as possible and start the battle. The Sanguine Staff is extremely useful when facing the Empress of Light during the day as unlike most other minions the bats have a huge aggro range and are very accurate. This means I can focus on avoiding the Empress's attacks and landing whip hits while my minions will deal guaranteed damage during the battle. To avoid her ethereal lances I fly in a slow circle around her and then use a mid-air dash when she gets too close. The slimy saddle comes in really useful to quickly descend if I find myself caught too high in the air putting me at risk of not being able to dodge the Empress's attacks. The combination of the asphalt, fish run wings, master ninja gear and slimy saddle give me the mobility I need to avoid getting hit and eventually the Empress falls and the almighty Terra Prisma is ours. Back at base all that's left to do is take our defender medals and buy the squire sentry armor set to boost our ballista canes damage and sentry count. This stage had plenty of upgrades for us including a set of spooky and Squire armor and tons of new weapons including the Kaleidoscope, Dark Harvest, Terra Prisma, Staff of Frost Hydra and Ballista Cane. We got two powerful summoner accessories in the Papyrus Scarab and Necromantic Scroll, some Master Ninja gear and a pair of Fishron wings. I'd like to give a quick honorable mention to the Sentry Summoner sets and weapons from the Tavern Keep NPC. Personally I feel you're better off maximizing the damage of the Terra Prisma but Sentries can be useful before you acquire it for grinding events like the Pirate, Solar Eclipse and Pumpkin and Frost Moon events. We've made it to the final stage and now everything in the game is available to us to become truly overpowered. I head straight to the temple to challenge Golem. You might not believe it but we can still get even stronger and it all starts by smashing the temple guardian. I set up a basic arena in the Golem chamber and get the battle started. As I expected, our Kaleidoscope and Terra Prisma make short work of poor Golem, but as I have a few extra power cells, I pick on him a little bit more for some extra loot. I head to the ocean with a battle potion and water candles to find a Martian probe and start the Martian Madness event. It doesn't take long to find a probe and I quickly teleport back to base to start farming. I really want to maximize our damage and total minions in this last stage and part of doing that is freeing up my accessory slots from using mobility items. The Cosmic Car Key, which is dropped by the Martian Saucer with a roughly 16% chance gives unlimited flight and decent move speed which will allow me to swap out my wings and boots against the moon lord for maximum damage. It does take me two martian invasions but finally the cosmic car key drops and I'm one step closer to being absolutely overpowered. With golem defeated the final tier of the old ones army is unlocked. I need a total of 325 medals to buy a set of endgame sentry armor and the tier 3 sentry summon so I'll need to beat the final boss Betsy four times. Thankfully our terror prisma protects the crystal quite well 
well, and soon enough we have all the medals we need. I crack my whip at the cultists as we prepare to take on the lunatic cultists. I just go crazy whipping the robed menace and it only gets a handful of attacks off before we take it down. I quickly burst through three of the pillars including the stardust, solar and nebula. I need stardust fragments to craft the stardust armor after the moon lord and all the fragments can be used to craft super healing potions which restore a whopping 200 HP. Back at base I buy the ballista staff and Valhalla knight armor which gives me 60% bonus minion damage, 7 armor reduction on ballistas and an extra 3 sentry summon slots which makes this a useful event fighting set. I also grab my summoner emblem out of my accessories box as we'll want to max out our damage against the moon lord. After setting my spawn point at my asphalt runway I make my way to the last pillar and take out the mobs defending it. Soon enough the shield falls on the pillar and I quickly take it down. I hastily grab the fragments and teleport back to our moon lord arena. I swap out my mobility accessories for the pygmy necklace and summoner emblem, refresh my buffs and await impending doom. My terra prisma goes absolutely crazy attacking the moon lord's eyes. Usually I try to slowly damage them so I kill all three around the same time but there's no slowing down our damage here. Once the forehead eye opens I let loose with our kaleidoscope and before long the core bursts open and we've almost won. With no other targets left our terra prisma shred the core to pieces and soon enough the moon lord starts exploding. We beat the moon lord fairly quickly as expected with the terra prisma but I definitely think we can focus our damage more by not flying during the fight and push our minion count and damage up even higher. The next day I place some bubble blocks at my old arena and place a single wood block to grab onto during the fight. I then place a bath statue for increased defense and fill the bubble blocks with honey. So what's the ultimate build for summoners in Terraria? I spent some time grinding the pillars in Moon Lord to find out. After a few more trips through the pillars I now have a full set of stardust armor to go with our Valhalla Knight armor. We have the rainbow crystal and lunar portal sentry staffs to go with our ballista staff. Our main summon of course is still the Terra Prisma due to its insane damage potential. Our final accessories are the necromantic scroll, papyrus scarab, pygmy necklace, hercules beetle and berserker's glove all with the menacing modifier. Instead of trying to dodge the moon lord's attacks we simply grapple in the honey and challenge him to a DPS race. By not moving at all I can give maximum focus to keeping our kaleidoscope hitting one eye at all times for big damage enabling us to destroy all of the moon lord's eyes in a single cycle. With the core open I grapple across slightly and the combination of the icor debuff, our kaleidoscope and terra prisma attacking simultaneously melted in mere seconds truly giving the moon lord the OP treatment. I had so much fun maxing out our summoner at each stage of the game. A lot of you have been asking me to do OP videos on the Rogue class from Calamity and the Bard class from Thorium so let me know if you'd like that by smashing a like on this video and leaving a comment with which class you'd like next. Also if you have any other ideas for equipment builds at various stages in this video please let me know in the comments below. I had a blast making this video and if you enjoyed it too please smash the like button and consider subscribing for more fun videos like this. And here's the most important part as always, you'll stay happy and I'll see you soon. This is Happy Days signing out. See ya!